T-scan has one more surprise for Alejandro. Shamai's ethnicity. They have just told me that uh, Shamai has a Nubian feature, which means that um, their ruling family was probably Nubian, and th that was unexpected. Examining Shamai's anatomy closely, the thickness of his bone and the shape of his nasal cavity, the anthropologists think he was a black African, likely from neighboring Nubia. A huge revelation that challenges the prevailing image of the Egyptian ruling class. Always thought the ancient Egyptian elites were Mediterranean type. And in this sense, Shema is representing the society of, uh, of the frontier in which different ethnic uh, groups were mixed. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemai was Egyptian. Were the Egyptian pharaohs, their families, the ruling aristocracy, and the religious class black? For decades, Western scientists have used their influence to spread ideas that they were not black, but had Mesopotamian roots. Whenever mummies were found, Western scientists would take and study them. However, the reports were presented instead of allowing the world to see how those mummies looked. But now, the evidence can no longer be hidden. And recently, a group of scientists was circled by people to find out the DNA of a mummy found in Egypt. This mummy is about 4,000 years old and is of a priest who belonged to a ruling class in Egypt. The revelation of his DNA report has shocked the entire world and proven all Western scientists and anthropologists wrong. So, what does the DNA report say about whether Egypt's ruling class and pharaohs were black? Let's know about that in this video. So, what mummy was discovered in Egypt? In the region near Aswan, Egypt, along the Nile River, archaeologists have unearthed a tomb believed to hold the mummy of Shemai, the younger brother of a prominent governor in ancient Egypt. Dating back over 4,000 years, the structure offers a glimpse into the lives of individuals associated with the ruling elite of that time. This finding offers insights into ancient Egyptian society's familial ties and societal dynamics. Recent research suggests that women, including members of Shemai's extended family, held significant roles, often acting as bearers of legitimacy, according to an Egyptologist familiar with the research. The tomb itself is a fascinating discovery, revealing evidence of multiple burials. Among the artifacts uncovered are two coffins, at least one mummy, and crafted wooden models of boats and figures. However, parts of the tomb appear to have been looted in antiquity, while others remain unexplored. One of the coffins found in the tomb bears an inscription identifying it as the final resting place of Shemai. Shemai's brother, Sarenput II, served as a governor of Elephantine and a military leader during the reigns of pharaohs Senwosret II and Senwosret III. Until now, Shemai's appearance was believed to be closely similar to Mediterranean people. However, even if the mummy does not reveal its true appearance, its DNA study does tell us about Shamia's roots. But before we tell you about that, let's first know what more has been found in the tomb. Located at Kubet El Hawa, or the Hill of the Wind, the tomb is part of a cemetery that served as the burial site for nobles associated with Elephantine, an ancient city situated on Elephantine Island in the Nile River. While historical texts provide some insight into Sarenput II's life, little is known about Shamai making this discovery particularly significant in shedding light on lesser-known figures from Egypt's past. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities has commended the discovery for its contribution to understanding individuals who lived in the shadow of power. Plans are in place for further exploration of the tomb in the coming year, with the goal of uncovering more details about Shemai and his role in ancient Egyptian history. The discovery of numerous family members at the site has been a significant reward for archaeologists. The Ministry of Antiquities stated that the abundance of individuals provided a rare chance to explore the living conditions of the upper class in Egypt over 3,800 years ago. Despite the common belief that ancient Egypt was a patriarchal society, the examination of these 14 family members has revealed the crucial role played by women within this family dynamic, as emphasized by Jimenez Serrano. The main archaeologist, Jimenez Serrano, underscored the remarkable importance of this discovery especially concerning the pivotal role of women in the family structure. 
He pointed out that women acted as the bearers of legitimacy, inheriting divine blood from a deified ancestor, thus highlighting their essential position within the family hierarchy. While DNA analysis of the 14 family members could reveal further insights, Jimenez Serrano expressed enthusiasm for such research. However, he mentioned that the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry has thus far withheld authorization for such a study. But now, permission has been granted, and scientists have been able to study Shammai's DNA. So, what does the DNA report reveal that has shocked the world? Well, until now, all the genetic studies of the ancient Egyptian mummies found in various tombs were meant for one thing, to prove that they were non-black, but of Mediterranean origin. Because Western scientists got the rights to conduct studies and found mummies buried for centuries, they had the monopoly. They tried every method to establish the wrong fact that ancient Egyptians and pharaohs were not black and not of African origin. However, a study has challenged this belief. Not only that, but this new DNA study declares hundreds of earlier studies wrong, biased, and Eurocentric. It raises concerns that there is a chance that if those mummies are studied by independent non-Western scientists, the world could really know the reality. In a groundbreaking revelation, anthropologists have definitively established that numerous ancient Egyptian rulers and elites were part of the black community. This comes after studying Shammai's DNA sequencing. It's believed that he was not just an ordinary Egyptian, but a distinguished high priest from an elite family, renowned for establishing cities in the ancient civilization of Kemet, situated along the Nile River in Northeast Africa, now known as modern-day Egypt. Earlier, when the race and roots of Egyptian mummies were not studied in detail, now was different. The world demanded that proper study should focus on deciding whether Shammai was black or not. Well, interestingly, a thorough analysis of his skeletal remains led experts to conclude that Shammai likely displayed Nubian features, confirming that this ancient Egyptian elite belonged to the black community. But who are Nubians? The ancient Nubians occupied the territory known as Nubia, located in present-day Sudan and southern Egypt along the Nile River. With origins tracing back to approximately 3000 BCE, their civilization ranks among the oldest in the region. Recognized for their rich cultural legacy, sophisticated social structures, and strategic position between Egypt and sub-Saharan African civilizations, the ancient Nubians wielded considerable influence in shaping the history of the Nile Valley and northeastern Africa. They actively participated in trade and cultural interactions with neighboring societies, including the Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Now, Shammai's DNA reveals that the influence even reached the ruling class of Egypt, which was itself Nubian, thriving on advancements in agriculture, extensive trade networks, and impressive architectural feats, the Nubian civilization boasted remarkable achievements. They constructed magnificent cities, temples, and pyramids, showcasing their expertise in engineering and architecture. Additionally, Nubian artisans were renowned for their craftsmanship, producing exquisite pottery, jewelry, and textiles that garnered admiration across the ancient world. Throughout its existence, the political landscape of ancient Nubia underwent shifts marked by the emergence and decline of various kingdoms and city-states vying for supremacy in the region. Prominent among these were Kerma, Kush, and Meroe. The Kingdom of Kush in particular rose as a dominant force in northeastern Africa, exerting control over both Nubia and parts of Egypt during different epochs. Notably, during the 25th dynasty, known as the Kushite or Nubian dynasty, the Nubians seized and governed Egypt, leaving an indelible imprint on its historical narrative. In addition to their achievements in politics and architecture, the ancient Nubians were celebrated for their distinctive cultural contributions, their unique art, language, and religious beliefs revolving around a diverse array of deities, mirrored influences from Egypt while reflecting the distinctiveness of Nubian identity. Now, Shammai's DNA challenges the prevailing belief that ancient Egyptian elites were exclusively of Mediterranean origin. The inscriptions on the coffin further validated Shammai's lineage, revealing that his father held a prominent position as a governor in the region of Upper Kemet, while his mother was the daughter of the region's founder, Senusret the May, who served as the right-hand man to the pharaoh of Kemet at the time. What adds to the amazement is that these events transpired over a millennium before the rise of the 25th dynasty, 
during which the black pharaohs wielded significant influence and transformed Egypt. This indicates that black rulers in Egypt existed long before this period. Does it mean that the West deliberately tempered history? Well, the answer is yes. The true history of ancient Egypt has long been distorted, with its true origins obscured by false notions of Mediterranean superiority. However, the truth cannot remain concealed forever. The discoveries surrounding Shammai and his lineage provide compelling evidence that the roots of ancient Egypt are deeply embedded in African soil, far from the shores of the Mediterranean. Historical and popular depictions of ancient Egypt have often been influenced by colonial and Eurocentric perspectives. During the colonial era, European scholars propagated the notion that ancient Egyptians were more closely aligned with Europeans than Africans, a narrative aimed at justifying European colonial rule in Africa. It was also propagated so Europeans could be created for all the innovation and technology developed in Egypt. Fortunately, modern scholarship has debunked this misconception, highlighting the diverse and multicultural nature of ancient Egyptian society. The African origins of Egyptian civilization can no longer be dismissed. In this respect, the Egyptian Sphinx stands as a potent symbol of Egypt's African origins. Early records from scholars depict the Sphinx with African or Negro characteristics, such as thick lips, wide cheekbones, and a protruding maxilla, features not commonly associated with the white race. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Does it mean that Egypt had many black pharaohs, which history books do not discuss? The answer is yes. Throughout history, Egypt boasted many black pharaohs with unmistakable African features. From the archaic period to the late period, ancient Egyptian rulers displayed traits indicative of their African lineage. Even during the New Kingdom, leaders like Thutmose I exhibited undeniable Negroid characteristics, including thick lips and broad noses. As Egypt progressed through different epochs, the prominence of Negroid features varied among rulers. While some, like Amenemhat III and Ramses II, showed clear Negroid traits, others, such as Seti I, displayed features more commonly associated with Caucasians. Nonetheless, the overall picture indicates a significant African influence in ancient Egyptian rulership. In 2012, DNA analysis further supported the presence of black pharaohs in ancient Egypt. DNA findings of Pharaoh Amenhotep III and Pharaoh Tutankhamun showed similarities with individuals from the Great Lakes region in southern Africa. Similarly, analysis of Ramses III's DNA linked him to sub-Saharan Africans, particularly West Africa. This evidence overwhelmingly supports the idea that ancient Egyptian rulers were indeed black African individuals, with their African features serving as a testament to their heritage and legacy. However, despite this evidence, the portrayal of ancient Egyptians in popular media and culture has often been influenced by prevailing racial prejudices and stereotypes. It is crucial to acknowledge and address these historical distortions to provide a more accurate and inclusive portrayal of ancient Egypt and its rulers. Despite the compelling evidence of ancient Egyptians being black, the tradition of whitewashing ancient Egypt persists. This leads us to the question of whether present-day Egyptians are similar to the ancient Egyptian people and rulers. The answer is no. By now you would have known that the ancient Egyptian commoners and rulers had African heritage and appearance. In other words, they were black and one did not need to think much to decide where they belonged. But today, it's hard to say that Egypt's people are black. It's because they are simply not black. It's because, throughout the history of Egypt, the region has seen numerous migrations and invasions by various ethnic groups, including Greeks, Romans, Arabs, Turks, and Europeans. These arrivals of people brought genetic diversity to the area, resulting in a blending of ethnicities and physical traits over time. Over centuries of trade, conquests, and cultural exchanges, ancient Egyptians interacted with individuals from diverse regions, such as the Mediterranean, the Near East, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Interethnic marriages and relationships led to genetic mixing, contributing to the variety of physical features among ancient Egyptians. Environmental and socioeconomic factors also played significant roles in shaping the physical appearance of ancient Egyptians, Elements like climate, diet, 
and socioeconomic status could impact physical traits across generations. Changes in lifestyle, including urbanization and access to different foods, likely influence the population's physical characteristics over time. The evolution of physical traits among ancient Egyptians was further influenced by genetic drift and natural selection. Genetic drift, which involves the random changes in gene frequencies over generations, and natural selection, which favored certain advantageous traits, played pivotal roles in shaping the population's physical attributes. Despite efforts to distort ancient Egyptian history, there are undoubtedly notable pharaohs acknowledged as black and firmly documented in historical records. The Nubian kings, known as the Black Pharaohs, ruled during the 25th dynasty from around 760 to 656 BCE, originating from the Kingdom of Kush, located in present-day Sudan, the Nubians are of African descent, constituting an indigenous ethnic group native to the Nile Valley region in Africa. These kings conquered and unified Egypt, initiating a significant cultural exchange and revitalizing Egypt's once fading splendor. The 25th dynasty began with King Pai, who seized Egypt's capital in 727 BC and proclaimed himself Pharaoh, establishing Kushite dominance. His successor Shabaka further solidified Kushite control by prevailing over the rival 24th dynasty. Later rulers like Taharqa and Tanutamun continued to strengthen the authority of the Black Pharaohs over Egypt. The Black Pharaohs left a lasting architectural legacy by constructing new temples and enhancing existing ones. Taharqa stood out as the most prolific builder among them, undertaking ambitious projects like expanding the Temple of Amun at Karnak in Thebes, demonstrating his commitment to revitalizing Egyptian religious sites. Additionally, the Kushite rulers revived pyramid construction, building impressive tombs across the land. They began pyramid construction around 751 BC at El Kuru, where King Pie was laid to rest. More pyramids were erected at the Nuri site, echoing the style and symbolism of ancient Egypt. It is worth noting that many Nubian pyramids still stand today, highlighting their enduring durability. The resurgence of pyramid building by the 25th dynasty not only reinstated ancient Egyptian burial customs, but also emphasized the close bond between Nubia and Egypt. This connection further underscores the black heritage of ancient Egyptian rulers, as the rulers of the 25th dynasty were primarily of Nubian descent. The construction of pyramids by these rulers offers tangible evidence of the African origins of Egyptian civilization. So, what is more proof that suggests ancient Egyptian people and the ruling class were black? Well, there are tens of DNA studies done on Egyptian mummies that reveal their African roots and black complexion. However, these studies have been suppressed, and you will not find them readily available. One such secret investigation, spearheaded by geneticist Johannes Krauss and his team, delved into the genetic material extracted from 151 mummies, spanning the period from around 1400 BCE to 400 CE. The results of this study unveiled a diverse genetic makeup among ancient Egyptians, revealing connections to populations not only from the Near East, but also from Sub-Saharan Africa. Intriguingly, while certain mummies exhibited genetic similarities to groups from the Near East, others displayed closer genetic associations with populations from Sub-Saharan Africa. This diversity in genetic profiles suggests a significant degree of intermingling and population movement within ancient Egypt, indicative of the region's extensive history of trade, migration, and conquest. Similarly, another notable investigation, led by geneticist Verena Schoenemann, concentrated on genetic material extracted from mummies dating to the New Kingdom period, spanning approximately 1550 to 1070 BCE. Like the study led by Johannes Krauss, this research also unearthed evidence pointing to genetic affinities with populations originating from both the Near East and Sub-Saharan Africa, further emphasizing the genetic complexity inherent in ancient Egyptian populations. What's more, some scholars like Cheikh Anta Diop have succeeded in revealing the true roots of ancient Egyptians. Being a scholar from Senegal, he went to Paris in 1946 with aspirations of pursuing a career in physics. Over his 15-year stay, he immersed himself in the study of physics under the guidance of Frederick Joliot Curie, extensively exploring Einstein's theory of relativity and translating portions of it into his native Wolof. Yet, Diop's scholarly pursuits extended well beyond the confines of physics, 
including a broad spectrum of subjects, including African history, Egyptology, linguistics, anthropology, economics, and sociology. Armed with a comparative, eclectic, and Afrocentric investigative approach, he embarked on a mission to rectify historical inaccuracies, ultimately achieving international recognition and heralding a new era in African historiography. Central to Diop's argument advocating for an African origin of Egyptian civilization is the Egyptians' own terminology and cultural practices. They dubbed their land Kamit, which translates to the Black Land, and identified themselves as Kamu, meaning the Blacks. Notably, their term for East aligned with Left, while their word for West corresponded with Right, suggesting a Southern orientation reflective of their African heritage. Additionally, Egyptian inscriptions frequently referenced Punt, encompassing present-day Somalia and northern Kenya, as their ancestral homeland, evoking sentiments of reverence and awe towards inner Africa. Moreover, evidence from the genealogy of Noah in Genesis supports Diop's assertions, portraying Egypt as part of the Black or African lineage. Ancient Greek writers, including Herodotus, also affirmed the Black and African identity of the Egyptians, citing characteristics such as their dark skin and woolly hair. Diop challenged earlier depictions of ancient Egyptians as a dark red or Mediterranean race, highlighting the melanin content found in Egyptian mummy skin and craniometric studies that debunked prior assumptions. Furthermore, Diop, in collaboration with linguist Theophile Obenga, showcased at a significant symposium in Cairo that the Egyptian language fundamentally belonged to the African linguistic tradition. This landmark event marked a pivotal moment in Egyptology, refuting theories that denied Egypt's African roots. Subsequent discoveries, including artifacts from a pharaonic kingship in Nubia, predating the first Egyptian dynasty, further validated Diop's arguments. His vision of Egypt's place in African history, reminiscent of the impact of the European Renaissance on European history, demands a thorough re-evaluation of African and global historical narratives, promising profound implications for future generations. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.